Okay, so in this video, we're going to do a little bit of a recap of the WTCS Abu Dhabi and what went down in the Middle East. normally an athlete would go from short course and then to long course so she's kind of done it the other way around but she said she wants to get to Paris for the Olympics in 2024. Ranks number 50th you wouldn't think an athlete in 50th has maybe have such an impact on the race even if she's not a contender she is going to change the dynamic of the race today. So I travelled out to Abu Dhabi on the Tuesday of race week and the race was actually going to be on the Friday so it was quite a short turnaround. I actually arrived in the evening there which worked quite well as it kind of just meant I could chill out, go to bed and then wake up the following day. Good morning from Abu Dhabi, it's my first morning here, I'm just going to head out for a little run. It's pretty warm actually, it's about 10am and definitely feels warmer than in the UK so no complaints here. This is me slightly less sweaty. We'll see how I look at the end of this run. I think the immediate kind of thing I felt on the Wednesday morning when I went out to do my morning run was it was hot. It was kind of a lot hotter than I'd anticipated. I had looked at the weather reports and it was saying high 20s, low 30s, but the actual real feel was more like high 30s and the humidity was up near 95 plus percent. So the first run I did there, I was like, oh God, this is gonna be pretty brutal. I wish I had spent more time in the sauna at home and heat prepping. I had done that on one occasion, but I'm not normally an athlete that struggles in the heat and our race was gonna be at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So I was still not too worried, but I knew it was definitely gonna play a factor in the race. Whew. Run down 35 minutes, just over 8K. Um, to anyone asking, is Abu Dhabi hot in November? It is bloody boiling absolutely boiling the locals might say otherwise apparently it's cooling down but that was it's just 11 a.m now and that was really warm of course that's an 8k run i'm pretty happy now we're doing a sprint because i've only got to run 5k but i actually felt really good speed was there it is just really warm so quite looking forward to getting the sea later hoping that's actually cold but session one in the bank and yeah abu dhabi you're not disappointing with the heat today I mean, first and foremost, the race was a sprint, so it's probably almost the most different end of the spectrum to what I'm used to racing. However, obviously racing in Malibu doing those short distance Super League events would have helped a little bit. The water temperature in Abu Dhabi was actually 31 degrees. So it was like swimming in a hot bath just to start with. So I guess as an athlete who normally does quite well in the heat, I wouldn't say that particularly held me back, but it was just a factor in the race.
So in our transition practice that we'd been doing at home, every time on the final one, which was normally I would do between six and ten rounds of doing the transition practice, every time on the last one we would actually time it and I would try and beat the previous time. And there was definitely ones earlier in the session that I'd done better, but this one was the one where it was timed and under pressure. So it was trying to replicate how it would be in a race, trying to not be frantic, trying to still be fast but calm in executing the transition. So that was the way we tried to replicate what would happen on race day. We've brought the box in, which obviously would be bigger. My running shoes would actually be in front of it and my bike would probably be like that. So this is a bit of a makeshift addition, but I'll make sure I put my helmet back in the box when I come into T2. But yeah, it's just another element thrown into the uh, situation. to the velcro so I won't wear socks in the race. I might have to go barefoot this time. Let's do one barefoot one and see what happens. Obviously it's still different because there's not other people around you causing havoc. You are doing it all on your own but it definitely was a good way of kind of doing it under a bit more pressure. Slower. Slower. Yeah by only one second but I'm not sure if I went slightly further around the tree yeah. but 119 is my best still. Yeah, when I look at the course in Abu Dhabi, I don't know what it'll be like, but it's like, if you could time doing your shoes up on a downhill where you're just rolling anyway, whereas yeah. when I was doing it before, I was like trying to put my shoes on as I get up to speed, but then you don't get up to speed. So you want to do it at the right time. But that is, well, a flying mount isn't a problem anymore. I feel like I can just do that. Yeah. So. so that's good. Yeah, I do six in each session, so I mean, always time the last one even if that wasn't my best one so <laughs> it's always the time one exactly what I'm gonna be like in a race and really lost them This was definitely worthwhile because I went into the race feeling more confident about doing the transitions and I think when we first did the timed effort about three weeks ago I did a 128 for the time transition and then my fastest one I think was about a 119 so I'd almost got 10 seconds quicker at executing this transition so that gave me some confidence however in the race none of that came together because when I got to my bike and started running with it out of T1, both my elastic bands were no longer attached to my bike. So I couldn't execute a flying mount because I'm not confident enough to do it without the shoes attached to the bike. So that's the next phase of training will be learning to do flying mount even when your shoes aren't attached to the bike and they're just spinning. So I just had to step over my bike because I felt like that was a better option than doing a fly mount and then hitting the deck. And then my dismount, bearing in mind, I must have done at least 60 transition practices at home. This never happened in practice, but on the race, when I dismounted, obviously you're standing on one shoe, you've brought the other leg over, that shoe just unattached from the pedal, so I just went down. So that didn't happen in practice. Luckily, I managed to save it. I didn't really hurt myself, but it was obviously frustrating because I'd put all of that practice in and basically none of it showed on race day. Hello, it is race day. We've got about six hours till the race starts. So still quite a long time. Got to get the braids in, um, got to get all my gear ready. Just started sticking numbers on the helmet, sticking numbers on my bike. Trying to think about how the race is going to unfold, but realistically, what can you do it's a sprint i don't think i can be too tactical i just know from the gun i'm just going to go all in try and not mess up my transitions see if i all of the training i've done is actually going to pay off on those i really hope it does it's going to be absolutely boiling so managing the heat well is going to be important but realistically again it's only an hour of racing so hopefully i don't overheat but yeah it's going to be a lot of fun i think i love the bike course it was really fun on there yesterday yeah it's just all to play for and most people's last race of the season. Definitely looking forward to getting out there, getting stuck in and just see what happens. So yeah, get ready to watch.
Well, it's the first time she's kind of racing at this level over the sprint distance. Looking excited and happy to be there. She's definitely got that bike strength, but it's just maybe her, her technical skill is not quite, quite there yet. So this was the second race, I believe, in the 2022 series with Hamburg being the first one. I think that's correct, but don't quote me on it. So basically, I've, I obviously didn't race in Hamburg. I don't have any points. So I was almost the last ranked athlete. I think there was two athletes after me. So it means that you are last to pick your spot on that start pontoon. So it could be seen as not that important. I think it really is important because you want to be on that pontoon with the other stronger swimmers so you can find the fast feet and you can get into position but I actually was quite surprised with the position that those athletes had picked because they'd decided to go far left on the pontoon which I felt like you actually would have to cut across to then go straight up to the boy that was our first turn boy so I actually picked the middle which I was surprised was empty but ultimately as one of the stronger swimmers I don't feel like it kind of disadvantaged me particularly but as other athletes I feel like you you could be really disadvantaged by getting one of those last um, kind of spots to pick because normally there's no spots left you'll just put wherever's left so yeah it's definitely something to think about and obviously the higher ranked you are the more of an advantage you will have there i did actually get the fastest t1 in the race and that was more of a learning lesson from leeds actually where in leeds i decided to lead out the swim go pretty hard so when I exited the water my heart rate was obviously almost max anyway so I wasn't able to completely sprint out of the water to my bike whereas here in Abu Dhabi I actually sat in the pack on the swim so my heart rate was a bit lower and then I was able to just completely sprint out of the water and I think I was ended up sixth out of the water but third out of t1 so i made up places in the run rather than in the water so yeah it's fun to experiment with different tactics in that part of the race it's just a shame that i couldn't really show the practice that i'd done in training on those transitions i actually found the bike course really fun like you're on an f1 circuit it's got some turns in it but you can really pick up speed in areas and I definitely feel like my bike handling is improving I'm just so much more confident but it's still in a different world to these top ITU girls like they are just so confident on the corners and even when I feel like I haven't even braked I've still got a gap so again it's something just to work on continue to improve on but I was really happy with the progress made on that 20 kilometer bike course and then the run obviously only 5k still pretty warm even though it was starting to cool down but it was still a factor to keep yourself cool it had a nasty hill in it twice as we came out of the tunnel which we obviously did five times on the bike but I felt it a lot more on that run and then at the end it was just like fighting for those final positions so I really had a battle at the end with one of the French girls to just get that 12th place finish I was going to be 13th and I was like no I don't want 13th I'm going to fight for one more place um, and just went all in to the end there but yeah overall an amazing learning experience and I actually had a lot of fun particularly on the bike my main strategy was obviously to be in the front group in the swim and try and maintain being in the front group on the bike which I managed to do for about a lap and a half, but those girls were seriously moving. I think they made it pretty obvious that they wanted to shell me off the back. They didn't want me in that group, which is fair enough. It's all very tactical on the short distance. So after a lap and a half, even though I felt like I was riding well, I just didn't have that top end watts that those girls were able to deliver out of a climb out of a corner where I might have lost just like half a second on a bend because I'm just not quite as skilled as they are so after a lap and a half that just completely bit me and I knew that I couldn't hang on and in hindsight I don't know how much longer they were going to maintain that speed maybe they did maintain it for the whole 20k I'm not sure but maybe if I just managed to stick in for a little bit longer and managed to hang in there that could have completely changed my race Obviously I wasn't able to do that, so I ended up doing the rest of the ride completely solo, which again, tactically, maybe wasn't the right thing to do, but I didn't feel like I had much choice because there was such a big group of girls behind me, but they were still a decent gap behind. I didn't want to just sit up and wait for them to catch me, and I knew I couldn't catch that front group again. So I just rode the entire thing solo, which 
took a lot out of my legs. My average power would have been a lot higher than those girls in the group behind me. But again, it's another learning experience, but it without a doubt would have taken something out of my run legs at the end. So my biggest learning points from the race is obviously it's a sprint distance. It's so short, every second counts. I was pleased with my transition practice, but hope that I get to do another race and actually execute those skills a lot better. So that's obviously a big takeaway. I'm gonna keep working on that so that I can show that in a race. If I want to do another one of these races, I really need to adapt my training to get that top, top end effort on the bike so that I can sit in on that front group. And also just working on those skills, continuing to work on the bike handling so that I am confident sat in there. I'm not gonna lose seconds on every corner and have to work that bit harder than everyone else. And then with that, my legs are gonna be fresher for the run. I'm gonna be able to run better I don't think I ran anywhere near my capability on that but yeah first ever sprint done and dusted lots of takeaways I, I definitely think I'm probably going to be better at the Olympic distance it's more closer to what I normally do but I do think with adapted training I could also be very good at the sprint distance as well I definitely went into this race with not a goal on positions whatsoever it was just about getting around safely not crashing learning as much as I could, playing around with maybe different tactics to what I usually would. Would have been absolutely over the moon with a top 10, but it wasn't really something I had thought about. I guess the position really isn't important, to be honest. It's just that I went there, learnt a lot, definitely put myself out of my comfort zone. This is a sprint distance. This race lasts for less than an hour. I am the world champion at a race that lasts for four hours. And yeah, we can just go away and work on those skills and hopefully I can get a start at some point next year to kind of put those new skills into practice. Okay, so as you all know, I love a bit of a giveaway with our YouTube channel. So I'm gonna be giving away my race cap from Abu Dhabi and my race accreditation, which I'll sign. We are gonna ask you, do you prefer to race in hot or cold climate? and why we will select five to ten of our favorite answers and then we will raffle those answers to get the one winner for the cap and the accreditation so make sure to comment below your answer and we will select a winner from those okay so as always thank you for watching this video that's been a little bit of a wrap up about Abu Dhabi and my first ever sprint distance I would just like to say a massive thank you because I was completely overwhelmed by the number of fans I got to meet on the race course whilst out in Abu Dhabi so thank you for coming to say hi I don't think I've ever had so many photos after a race so it really was an amazing experience so thanks for making my time in Abu Dhabi so much fun and as always make sure to like and subscribe as we will try and bring you as many cool videos about racing and the upcoming off season. This is why I normally have battle braids because I can't deal with this.